What is the best way to use the higher time frame? Well, in this video, I'm going to reveal free simple ICT concepts and models that even beginners can learn to easily transform their trading results from negative to positive. But first, let me show you examples of where the higher time frame is necessary. You can see here that we are on the one minute time frame and that we have this fair value gap and price is pretty bearish. So it should be a no brainer to enter based on this fair value gap, right? But let's just see what happens. We can see that price disrespected this fair value gap and went in the completely opposite direction. And this could easily be avoided by using the four concepts I will explain now. The first concept is higher time frame bias. And this is something that 99% of traders don't use. You can have the most perfect strategy on the lower time frame, but if the strategy doesn't clearly align with the higher time frame bias, then it is not going to reach its full potential. Because the higher time frame bias gives us clear understanding of where the market is going and also provide us with a strong draw on liquidity, which is another crucial part. But how do we even find the bias? Well, there's two ways I like to use. The first one is using previous day sign, previous day slow, which I've made a lot of videos about. But the second way I've actually never talked about before. Now, I won't really go in details on how to use previous day high and previous day slow, as I've explained it many times before. But in simple terms, when price fails to make a close above or below previous day high or low, then we would anticipate price to reach in the opposite direction. You can see right here that price failed to close beneath previous day's low, meaning then the previous day's high is drawn liquidity for the next day. Then price failed to close above previous day's high, meaning previous day's low is then the drawn liquidity for the next following day. But then we have an exception. You can see that we have a consolidation candle, meaning price failed to reach both previous day's low and previous day's high. But then how do we know where price should reach for? Well, we could look for something like equal highs or a specific drawn liquidity. And in this case, we do have equal highs, which is a drawn liquidity. So that means price should easily reach for the equal highs. And we can see price did indeed do that. When price actually makes a close above or below previous day's high or low, then we would anticipate price to continue the bias. For example, you can see here that price closes above previous day's high. Then previous day's high is a drawn liquidity for the next day. And that also counts for up here price makes a close above previous day's high, then previous day's high is to draw liquidity for the next following day. And the same counts for previous day's low. So when price makes a close beneath previous day's low, then previous day's low for the next following day is to draw on liquidity. Now the second way we can find the bias is a very unique way. So first we start by looking at a fair value gap, and the highest candle of that fair value gap, we want it to be previous day's low. So then price is both going to reach down into previous day's low and at the same time reach into a fair value gap. So we essentially have two areas of support pushing price higher. And this is going to increase the chances of price moving higher massively. An example of this could be right here. So we can see we have just created a fair value gap. And the highest candle of the fair value gap in this case is considered as previous day's low. So then we can see price reaches into this fair value gap and at the same time reaches previous day's low. Price fails to make a close beneath previous day's low and also fails to close within the favorability gap. So now for the following day, the bias is very strong. As we know, we have two areas of support pushing price higher. So in this case, the bias should be very bullish and price should target previous day's high and previous previous day's high. And we can see that price did indeed do that. Another example of this would be right here. So we can see that we have created a Favaldi gap. And at the same time, the highest candle of this Favaldi gap is considered as previous day's low. So for this case, we again have two areas of support pushing price higher. And also price fails to close beneath previous day's low, meaning previous day's high is to draw on liquidity for the next following day. So let's just see what happens again. And again, such as previous example, price reached that previous day's high and also previous previous days high. And this doesn't only count to the daily time frame, you can of course also use it to the other higher time frames, such as the one hour and four hour time frame. The second concept is time frame alignment. And this is where it gets interesting. Now we already know how to find the higher time frame bias, but can we combine them together? You might think this is difficult, but it really isn't. We first started the highest time frame, which in this case is the daily time frame. And when we have figured out the daily bias, 
which is bullish, we would then move down into the 4 hour time frame. I really hope you see where this is going. Now we analyze the 4 hour time frame by following the two steps I mentioned before on the daily time frame. So instead of using previous day high and previous day low, we use previous 4 hour high and previous 4 hour low. And now it becomes interesting because we want the 4 hour time frame to align with the daily bias. And in this case, we can see that price failed to close beneath previous 4 hour low. And that meant for the next following 4 hour candle, previous 4 hour high is to draw on liquidity. And price is also delivering from a bullish Favoli gap, which I mentioned on the daily time frame was extremely bullish. So the 4 hour time frame is aligning with the daily time frame. The reason we want the time frames to be aligning with each other is because it would increase the chances of the bias being correct. And in this case, there's two time frames which are telling us price wants to move higher. And now that we have figured that out, we want to move down to the last time frame, which is the one hour time frame. On the one hour time frame, we can see that we have this high up here, which is previous day's high, meaning this is a obvious draw on liquidity. And down here, price also made a close up of previous one hour candle. And that means that the next previous one hour candle is going to be the draw on liquidity. But then we can see price created a consolidation candle. So still, we would anticipate this high up here to be the draw on liquidity as we have a more significant draw on liquidity up here. So let's see if price is bullish as we anticipated on the daily, 4 hour and 1 hour time frame. And we can indeed see that price were pretty bullish, closing above previous 1 hour candles over and over and over again until we reached the significant draw on liquidity we had on the daily time frame. When the time frames are aligning, such as this example I just showed you guys, then the chances of price moving higher have significantly increased, I would almost say doubled. And we can also use this approach to identify high probability trading conditions. The two concepts we have gone over so far are not that great if you don't use them with this third concept. Now you have probably used a bunch of ICT models on the lower time frame. But if you use them on the higher time frame combined with the first and second concept, you officially have the perfect way to find the higher time frame bias. And you also know how to use higher time frame bias the best way. But first we just have to know how to do that. And it's very simple. First, we have to choose an ICT model. And I really like to use the MMXM model as it gives clear confirmation and good trade opportunities for the lower time frame. But I'm trying to keep it as simple as possible for you guys. So let's just go with the inversion fair volley gap model. And it also works really well. So what we do here is to go out to any higher time frame. And in this case, the one hour time frame. And then we're going to find the inversion fair volley gap model play out. As it gives us strong confirmation, the price is most likely going to move higher, so it's kind of like an extra piece to the puzzle. Now for this example, we can see that we have created this inversion fair value gap, and it's based on price creating a fair value gap delivery and a volume balance delivery down here. So this is perfect for the inversion fair value gap model, and price have also not reached the internal range liquidity as it made the close above the inversion fair value gap. Now, once we have found out the inversion for Valiga model play out, we want to implement the two other concepts. The way we can implement these two concepts to this inversion for Valiga example is by starting on the daily time frame because we want to see all the time frames align with each other, and we're going to identify the bias by using the two steps I mentioned at the start of the video or the first concept. Now we're currently seeing this candle play out on the daily time frame. And remember, this example was an exception, as I mentioned in the start of the video, because price have created equal highs. Though price still failed to close above previous day's high for this candle, we created equal highs, which is a very strong draw on liquidity. So on the daily time frame, we're pretty bullish. Then we're going to move down into the forward time frame. And here we can also see price is pretty bullish. And the way we can do that is that price is closing over previous 4 hour high over and over and over again, or several times. So price on the 4 hour time frame is also pretty bullish. Then if we drop down on the 1 hour time frame, where the current inversion for value gap example is playing out, price is also pretty bullish. So let's see if we can move higher, taking out these Asian highs right here. And we can see price did indeed do that and created a fair value gap in the meantime, which then supported price in moving higher. 
Some very important things I hope you guys learn from watching this video is first of all that we want to look for previous days high and previous days low when identifying the daily bias or even the one hour and four hour bias and also looking at previous days high and previous days low with fair value gaps as it increases the chance of price moving higher. And then the second thing is that we want to see timeframes aligning with each other as it gives extra confirmation that price is willing to move in that direction with ranking the biases and also to identify the highest probability conditions. Now, the third very important factor I hope you learned from this video is that you use models on the higher time frame for extra confirmation for potential trade entries on the lower time frame. So this was the best way to take advantage of the higher time frame. But everything I've told you in this video is completely useless if you don't know what trading strategies to trade on the lower time frame or even what time you should be trading. So check out these two videos.